Hey you, welcome back to episode two of the Chase You Podcast. We're here at Cafe Carmelo. My new buddy Joe was kind enough to invite us in. Joe, tell us who you are, tell us where we're at here. Hey you doing? Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is uh, Joe Maglio, uh, owner of Cafe Carmelo. Joe, tell us a little bit about you. Obviously, we're in Cafe Carmelo, super busy in here just moments ago. This place is packed every day of the week, every hour of the day. But tell us how we got to this moment here where we're sitting at this table obviously you're a local guy talk to talk to talk to us about that upbringing was it in the kitchen was it in restaurants to ultimately leading us to where we're at right now yeah so um i grew up uh, right down the street in east tarsdale uh went to st catharines went to father judge for high school um i um uh, i always worked in the restaurant um when i was 14 i started at my cousin's restaurant right down the road at guido's I don't know if you ever remember Yeah, that. yeah. Um, and then, and then uh, when I was about 18, I went to my other relative's uh, macaronis, mm -hmm. and I worked there for 16 years. Um, and then um, for a after a while, after a while working there, I wanted to get out of the restaurant business. I actually became a barber. Um, I did an apprenticeship. I worked for about eight years as a barber. Um, and then I was, uh, um, I had an opportunity uh, to take over this spot, and uh, I always had it in the back of my head, and I always wanted to do something in the neighborhood. Um, for a while, I moved. My wife is from South Philly, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to, um, we, we actually lived in South Philly for a while. Um, and then when we got married, we, um, we decided to buy a house actually where I grew up, right in Tarsdale. And um, when I was younger, there was always a lot of good places, um, order pizza and whatnot. And then I went, when we went to South Philly, you have everything in your backyard, and everything's really good. And you know, and then when I came back, it was a little tough to find. Um, There's some little, you know, some good places still, um, but we wanted to bring some um, South Philly uh, flair and uh, my my parents cooking, you know. To this, to this neighborhood we thought it would be yeah, a good Yeah, absolutely. Good, I want to uh, say, idea. there's a lot of people, especially now, who are like, you know, South Philly is kind of like the epitome where it comes to a, Italian cooking, sure. and every single block there's a new place. Yep. And, you know, growing up in Northeast Philly, there was few and far between. Mm -hmm. Your family's places, Guido's yeah. and Macaroni's yeah. being two of them. Right. So when you were a judge, shout out to my fellow crusaders, when you were a judge, yeah. did you know that this is what you wanted to get into, or was it something uh, Not that necessarily, no. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I wanted. I, school was not for me. Sure. So I went to, you know, about two semesters of college, and that was it. And, um, and then I, uh, you know... Um, I, I went, you know, went into the trade mm -hmm. trade school as a as a barber, and um, I liked it. But mm -hmm. it was I always had my heart in the restaurant. You know, I, you have a, a clients in, and that's all we talked about was food. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I probably wasn't that good at cutting hair. So, <laughs> sure, uh, passionate about uh, food. Yeah, so um, so that's when, I, and I just want to had the idea, like you know. Um, my cousin's restaurants, they were a little more upscale, and I wanted to, you know, kind of bring it down a notch and, you know, have, um, have you know, a fa family be able to come in and mm -hmm. uh, be able to order four or five things and, you know, and not be too crazy expensive, but still qu good quality mm -hmm. food. Yeah, know? absolutely. Now, this place has been a couple a couple different things, and I think also owned by another Northeast Philly, Philly yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. Now, when was it when you saw this? Because obviously there's a couple couple different restaurants that came in here, unfortunately had to shut their doors. You guys have been yeah. through what seems to be yeah, everything Blue Duck, wildly Blue Duck successful. Was great. Yeah. Um, and then it was the Taco Place, and then mm -hmm. it was the um, Culture on the Circle. And I think it was right after Culture on the Circle closed. Um, I, know, I noticed that it was closed, and... Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, uh, I, I, uh, one of my customers at uh, Macaroni's was um, the owner of the strip, mm -hmm. and I just had, I, I just happened to see him, and I just asked him. I said, "Is it available?" He said, "Yeah." So, so what we could do. So, how did that? Like, talk us through just the feelings of that, where you're sitting there, you know, just networking. Things just kind of happen. Yeah. The guy owns the strip and says, "Yeah, it's it's open." What was the feelings of that? Of like, okay, we're jumping back into the restaurant business. Was that yeah, something was, you were waiting for? Or like, no, let's no, just do I wasn't. It? I wasn't waiting for it. It kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it just. I was still cutting hair, and yeah. I was still working at Macaroni's two days a week. You mm -hmm. know, um, I had you know I had two jobs essentially, and uh, and I figured. Um, you know, I always had 
an idea what I want that I I felt the neighborhood could you know benefit from because mm-hmm. um, this neighborhood's so strong mm-hmm. and um, and you have my neighborhood down the street in Tarsdale mm-hmm. so um, I just felt that they needed you know something that the neighborhood needed and um, we 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 dove in you know yeah I feel like in Northeast Philly there's a lot of really good sandwich places or delis you got yeah. Marinucci's yep. Linden what is mm-hmm. it Linden Deli that's up yep. there um, it's the one that's up in Parkwood as well Reens Deli yep. as well mm-hmm. but there was never that true like you said South Philly place where it's like you come here you're gonna get quality yep. everything so talk to us about like creating the menu what was it first like did you want to be successful on pizza and cheesesteaks was it all at once or did things just kind of matriculate and yeah you know, so um, my idea um, my d- idea initial idea in the beginning was just pizza and pasta mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you ever been to uh, Tacanelli's in in Jersey. Mm-hmm. So they kind of do a really good job at um, uh, just that mm-hmm. pizza and homemade pastas, and uh, that was kind of my idea, like to bring to this neighborhood as well. And then someone said, "Oh, you should put a cheesesteak on the menu." I was like, oh, "I don't know." I was like, "I don't know if I have the room because mm-hmm. uh, it was tight for space here." I was like, "You know," so. I don't, I don't, I still don't know. We still don't have the room for anything, mm-hmm. but we still make it work. And uh, the cheesesteak just kind of blew up. Sure. Um, um, but before we get to that cheesesteak, yeah. when when did you guys have like this aha moment? Was there, has there been an aha moment where you're like, Yo, you know, we really have something here? Because you guys opened prior to pandemic, right? Uh, six weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. You, okay. So we'll talk, let's talk about that first. You guys opened up six weeks prior to pandemic. Yeah. Bang, we get hit. I'm sure there's feelings of, oh no, what you know? What did we just do yeah, it was, here? It so, was really scary. It was we didn't know we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. We just opened. Um, we just um, we're kind of getting the hang of things mm-hmm. a little bit. You know, like I, I worked in a restaurant, but I never owned a restaurant. Sure. <laughs> so, but in any in anything you do, you have to have you know you have. Uh, a system mm-hmm. in place, and you got you got to learn you got to learn that system because every everywhere is different. So you know, uh, we were just learning, you know, and getting the hang of things, and we were really busy in the beginning, mm-hmm. which was great. And um, um, it, you look back on it, and you th- we thought we were really busy, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but now we're we're busier, sure. which is it's awesome. All yeah, yeah. So, um, but we just imagine like I, you know. And then we just kind of like I, I was nervous, but I, you know we never really let anybody know that we were nervous. Right. Um, but then because then we shut you down, and then mm-hmm. okay, like the first week you go through and it's all takeout, and you're still doing, you still got people coming in. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, sure. You know, and and then you know you got the city busting your chops with the masks <laughs> and the health and coming in. Right. It was, it was crazy. It was like, you know, we didn't know if they were going to shut us down with right. the, with the masks and all. Because nobody wanted to wear them, so mm-hmm. it was funny. Um, but um, but then you know uh, we were we were fortunate enough that you know our food is um, was takeout friendly with mm-hmm. the pizzas and all, and I think actually that helped us um, with our cheesesteaks a little mm-hmm. more because we got more takeout with the sandwiches. Mm-hmm. The pastas went down a little bit, sure. Um, but the pizza and the, and the cheesesteaks kind of you know stayed strong. Um, how did you guys, because new kid on the block, yeah. six weeks, boom, we're in pandemic. How did you guys get out there? Was it, you know, a lot of the, the clients from from the, you know, um, in your chair? Like, what was the marketing my, looking my, like for you um, My wife, has, I give 100% credit to her. She mm-hmm. um, is amazing with social media. Okay. So if you follow us on Instagram mm-hmm. or Twitter or, not Twitter, TikTok or, um, or anything like that, and, and we're always posting, mm-hmm. we kind of, you know, we do, we do a few things, a few, like giveaways, you mm-hmm. know. We're doing the cheese wheel this week. It's really popular mm-hmm. with people. Um, something different that the, for the neighborhood to kind of see. Um, and uh, it was just that, that's really how we how we got it going was Instagram. Yeah. You know, we just were posting and in the last uh, the last podcast that we did with Steak and Hoagie Works Abington, they were talking about that okay. too of like how key it is to utilize social media yeah. as a marketing tool and also the word of mouth. I think, it, yep. you know, you guys probably did the same thing. There's a lot of shops that are right here yeah. that maybe at the time weren't open, but hey, come try our stuff. Yeah. Like, here's a discount. But I think the one great thing about now with social media is that 
we're able and we're being like the people are able to control the narrative of like yep. these are the places that have the best pizza the best cheesesteaks the best hoagies not what you see on TV right. from some of the big conglomerates yeah. of like oh this is where you need to go for a two for ten takeout right. it's like okay but there's there's other places yeah. so yeah we had a few um, a few guys come through that are like you know um, I guess um, influencers mm-hmm. yeah. and whatnot. Um, well one being um, Dave Portnoy mm-hmm. came, and that was like huge. Mm-hmm. Sure, he's got like a million followers. Yeah. And, you know, we were busy just people that mm-hmm. thought he was here. Sure, <laughs> he, you know, right, right, right. It was crazy, uh, but that was huge for us. What was that experience like? You see him come down there. Did you guys know? I know he tries so, to come um, unnoticed, but uh, my uh, hostess, um, the phone rang and she read the name and it mm-hmm. said um, it didn't say Portnoy. It said um, what's his guy? Frank. Frankie. Frank. Uh, I don't know Frankie's uh, last name. Sorry, Frankie, if you're watching this. Was it? Borelli. Mm-hmm. Frank Borelli. And she saw it and she recognized Right. It. So when the guy ordered, he said, it's um, Dave P. Okay. So she was like, oh, not. She was like, and then I got, you know, super nervous a little bit. You know, I was like, uh, um, he um, he rated our pizza. He didn't give us the best score mm-hmm. that I thought. But our pizza from then mm-hmm. has grown immensely. Um so if you're watching this, you come back. Yeah, Portnoy, I know you're following, you're watching. you got to come back down to Cafe Carmela and let's do yeah. a round two. Let me know. Yeah. Um, but, like, uh, I feel like our food uh, in general has evolved into, you know, um, you know, something that we're really happy with. Not that we were happy in the beginning, mm-hmm. but we had different people um, um, in the beginning than we do now. And that was one of the hardest things for me. Mm-hmm. Um, was finding people, especially in the pen- during the pandemic, and um, keeping people and and um, pe- people that actually wanted to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I feel like we have like one of the best crews, and mm-hmm. you know people used to wait forever for food, and yeah. you know, and we're a lot busier than we were. So, mm-hmm. and we're happy that we can get get it out a little faster, um, and try to you know still keep you know the quality up there. Yeah. Well, I think one of the telltale signs of like a great restaurant too is you know obviously there's there's a little bit of a space constriction here and yep. that's just because of the, the space that it is but regardless of that every time that I've ever driven by you have people happily waiting outside to yeah, get some, seated or pick some up are happily food. waiting well yeah. for, you know I've been happy <laughs> waiting outside because you know the quality of the food that you're going to get. yeah, yeah, very yeah I think hangry, people are hungry yeah. very hangry understandable I've been there a time or two but everybody seems to be you know willing to wait out there yeah with there's a uh, I'm very surprised like you know couple people come in and you're like oh 15 minutes they're like oh, i'm not waiting 15 minutes but then you tell the next person comes in you tell them an hour and they're yeah. like yeah no problem i'm gonna be in the car yeah you know they bring a bottle we open it for them we yeah. give them a um it's just, it sucks now that it's cold and people have to wait outside but you know they wait yeah. and you know some people get a little antsy but we we try our best and mm-hmm. you know it's, it's all we can do like with that obviously it sounds like customer service hospitality yeah. like i mean we just experienced it was it's it's second to none was that something that you were like, this is the standard? Was that something you learned from, you know, macaroni? Well, yeah, we or? always were in a, you know, kind of fine dining. And, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't want it to be stuffy like that either. Mm-hmm. Um, but we also didn't want it to be like, you know, that typical, like, not to bash like South Philly, but you can mm-hmm. go to some place and, you know, it tell you to wait. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you have a problem with it, then you can get out. Tough luck. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't want to be like that either. You know, I, I didn't want to, you know, but we're like, I feel like we're in between, mm-hmm. you know, as, as long as, you know, respectful to us, we, you know, we, we show that we're, we're one big family here. So I was just going to say yeah, that it feels so. very it, like incredibly familial in here where you guys walk around like, Hey, how are you doing? How's everything? How's yeah. The food? Well, that, that's and what, that's one thing we take kind of pride in. Um, my, um, you know, my, my wife works, you know, she, my wife is here with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have my my dad, uh, my mother-in-law, mm-hmm. my father-in-law, my sister, my mom. <laughs> my brother used to work here. Mm-hmm. Um, my nieces, my nephews starting work here now. They're you know busting tables mm-hmm. and whatnot, and um, so it, it is one big family. Yeah. And we we kind of, we treat all our staff like that too, and uh, and especially the, you know we have some really great customers mm-hmm. and. 
you know, we treat them as family. It seems like you have the usual suspects who come in. Yeah. And I think what's great is like seeing you guys out on the floor. You're out here making the pasta and the cheese wheel. Like yeah. you get to know the people. And I think yeah. that's again to the narrative of like you guys get to control or we get to control where you want to go, where are the places right. that you need to go. And that's so crucial now is being yeah. able to make those connections. And it seems, I don't know if it's just an Italian upbringing where it's like, this is just how you treat people. Right. You know, you're coming yep. over, this is, yep. it's time to eat and here's the yep. pasta and we're going to get to know you and we're going to talk and drink yep. wine and do Absolutely. a lot of this with our hands. And it's just, it's that's the it. usual thing that's that what people have grown up with. Yep. That's what it is. And um, we, um, you know, we, uh, we, we just, we take pride in that, uh, you know, that, and that's how it's just how we are. It's mm. our nature, you know. We're right. not going to be in the office on a computer, you know. We're going to be going to be out here, and, um, and I, I feel like a lot of our customers feel that, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you know, and uh, that's that's how it is. It does it just feels like you're walking into somebody's family kitchen and yeah. like, oh, it's it's Sunday sauce. Now, with let me ask this: the yeah. big question everybody's got <laughs> is it sauce or is it gravy? Is there a difference? So, I say sauce. Okay. Um, my South Philly part says gravy. Okay. But I think we come to understanding that gravy is if it has meat in it. So I, I'll I'll say that. That's it's it's big on social yeah. media. Every time I ask somebody, he's yeah. like, "Oh no, on Sunday it was called gravy. Right. The rest of the week it was called." Sauce. I always thought gravy was like what you put on mashed potatoes. Right, gravy's brown, yeah, right? right? That's yeah. that's my <laughs> take is that gravy is brown, yeah. sauce is red. No offense to anybody, but um, same thing. Grew, growing up, you know, Italian family was Sunday. It was Sunday sauce. You wake up eight o'clock in the morning, tomato, tomato paste. The onions are all in there cooking. Yeah. It was such a great way to wake up. But that's literally we walk through the store and we're like, oh my god, it smells yeah. so excellent. That, that was good that was our goal. That was our goal. Well, you're you crushing know? it now. Yeah. To to that point, you said we we talked about it a little bit earlier. You wanted to start off pizza and pasta. Yep. Obviously, both of those things are still on the menu. Yep. But when people hear Cafe Carmela and it's in the cheesesteak gurus on Facebook, yep. it's all over social media, it's the cheesesteaks that you guys are known for. Now, was that planned or was that just something that took off and you're like, okay, now we're cheesesteaks? No, we, um, we, 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 that was on our original menu. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll never forget I, uh, a guy from, um, a guy from Pace, was it? Remember uh, Pace Roofing, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. stood out. He he took a picture of himself and, and had a had a cheesesteak in the air, and um, he posted it on. It was our first. I, I, it was, after that, I felt like I don't know why. It, yeah. Or he said better than Steve's. And I feel like after that, I was like, it it skyrocketed. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to you know give him all the credit, sure. but I feel like you know. Face roofing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, if, you know, we're ready for sponsorship here, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, shout out to you guys. Um, but they, I remember, he, I, I, after that, I'll never forget that post because I was like, okay. But then it was like those those um, pages, mm -hmm. um, the gurus in a now cheesesteak uncensored, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, um, that helped us a lot, you know, with the cheesesteak. Because, yeah. you know, you don't realize that how... how Philadelphia a cheesesteak is mm -hmm. until you go on one of those pages right um, and in the beginning we got crushed a lot you know um, we were just kind of getting the hang of like we, we shaved our own ribeye mm -hmm. and you know if the guy in the back wasn't you know uh, had it a centimeter too thick sure. or didn't he was you know sleeping or something and mm -hmm. didn't uh, shave the um, the fat off and off then you got a hard piece a tough piece and like I said, like I said at the beginning, the toughest thing for us was to be consistent. Um, and I feel like, um, and I think about this a lot, I feel like a lot of places, um, and and not to say, like, I, I grew up on Steve's, and I mm -hmm. love Steve's, and I still love Steve's. Same. I still crave Steve's because it's a yep. different cheesesteak than, absolutely. than ours. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and they always use, you know... I, they they didn't use ribeye, but they use I don't know I'm not sure what they used, but it was good top quality yeah. meat, and they I love the you know they didn't chop yep. it whatever, and um, and I, a lot of a lot of cheesesteak places used um, use you know, whatever 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 it is like whatever people are used to, mm -hmm. if you anything you buy frozen, it's easier to be consistent. Sure, with because it's um, it's just. That's what it is. It's, right. It's that's how it comes it, in. It, that, yeah. it comes in consistent. Yep. You know, so it's going to fry consistent. Yeah, there's it's not too cook. many variables there. It's going to cook. Right. I feel like when you use fresh ingredients and you use um, quality ingredients mm -hmm. and 
um, it opens up to more inconsistencies because sure. you can really mess it up if yeah. you're not knowing what you're doing. So that that's what kind of like you know hurt hurt us a lot in the beginning. Not hurt us, but we had a hard time being consistent just because of the turnover in the kitchen. Yeah, you get some hit or miss um, on but that. But I feel like, like I said, I feel like now like we. You know, we got the we got everything down mm -hmm. to where we can be more consistent. Yeah, and I do agree with Steve's. There's something special about Steve's. Twelve o'clock, one o'clock yeah, in the morning, absolutely. you're driving down after a night at Hammerheads, <laughs> and you know, dollar twist the teas, yep. and you're like, oh, it's you know, it's time for Steve's with a yep. little bit of whiz fries and a birch beer. It's yep. tough to go wrong. Yeah, but absolutely. I think that's where, like, in the original review that I did um, with you guys. I put out there, like, if you want something different from Steve's, because yeah. Steve's has had a chokehold on Northeast Philly for yeah. cheesesteaks. I mean, aside from maybe Joe's, but that was all the way down. Joe's is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah love yeah. Joe's. Miss, you know, the old location now yeah. that it's closed, but love Joe's. But Steve's had, you know, the chokehold, and you guys are doing something drastically different. Yeah. Um, and I think, again, nothing against Steve's. It's different. Do I think that it's better? Yeah, it tastes a lot better and still love Steve's. Yeah. But when did you, like, how did you guys come up with that cheesesteak of like, okay, we're so doing the I, Cooper um, Sharp? I, I try to, um, you know, I can't take credit for everything. I, so I try to take the best of what I had and sure. kind of put it together. Mm -hmm. um, so my best cheesesteak for me, uh, besides, so I, I was actually on the fence. Do mm -hmm. I do a steak like Steve's sure. or do I do a steak, you know, um, a little different and um, that nobody up here knows about? Right. Um, and... Um, I feel like, okay, I'm not going to go Steve's way because that's up here already. So mm -hmm. we'll do... Uh, my favorite was John's Roast Pork. Love John's. <laughs> in South Philly. So um, they don't use Cooper. Um, mm -hmm. They use American. But they do use Karanji Rolls. And mm -hmm. for me, that was my favorite. Um, and then Angela's was doing the Cooper, Cooper Sharp. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get Angela's bread because he's making it himself. Right. And because um, that would be, for me, that's the, he has the best mm -hmm. bread. Um... um so we kind of, you know, you do that rough chop um, with the Cooper Sharp and the onions and the Karanji roll. It's yeah. Hard, it's, for me, it's hard to beat. You so know? you guys literally, because here's here was my top three coming into this. It was John's Rose Pork, Angelo's, mm -hmm. you guys. 1A, 1B, 1C. There was, no, there was no order to that. But you guys are taking the best of the bows in Angelo's and John's Rose Pork. And now you have your own little cheesesteak yeah, baby that is reigning right. supreme. Because, again, it's just I know that a lot of people on cheesesteak gurus have have it ranked as number one. You yeah. guys just got the number one ranking. How does that feel for you guys, especially going all the way back to Portnoy? You know, you don't get the best grade. It's now it's like, you know what? We're thriving. We yeah. have all of this out there. No, like, it's great. What's that roller coaster of emotion? It's great because, uh, the, you know, it, it's just how we've evolved. Like, I remember that guy that, you know, the guy that did the March Madness, you know, bracket mm -hmm. that we won. Um, was the um, judge's bracket when he first came here when we first opened he didn't like our cheese thing mm -hmm. um, like I said I think it was tough he didn't like the bread um, which you know we were learning which sure. is fine and you know and then we went all the way to beat you know all those other places like you know up here um, not, not necessarily up here it's Curly's I think mm -hmm. um, uh, Da Vinci's um which is really good. I've, I, I have, I have yet to have Curly's, mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know. A lot of meat, a lot of cheese. I'll let you be yeah. the judge on that one. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. So um, but, no, I think. And that Lillo's looks really good. I, yeah. It I, looks really good. It seems like a lot of the places are having similar cheesesteaks yeah. to what like, you guys are doing, Lilo's. Yeah. Um, I feel like it would like it does. It, are you doing, like, a garlic bread or something? Yeah, that's. It, I haven't had yeah. it yet. It seems yeah, really I good. Wanna try I, it. I wanted to get there before Portnoy got there. Yeah. And then he got there, and now right the line's now. down the yeah, street. Yeah. And it's like, uh, all right, yeah, I'll I get there when I can. Um, but when was it, did you guys, like, have a feeling of, okay, we're, we're now... We, we wanted to do pizza and pasta, now we're more cheesesteaks. Like, what do you guys sell more of, if you don't mind me asking? Okay, uh, so yeah. without, hesitation. without hesitation. Okay, gotcha. So I, I, I looked at the first week we opened, we did five cheesesteaks on Friday. Okay. And um, this Friday, I don't know, like 2.50. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. When did you guys, when you guys open on Fridays? We always open on Fridays. Like, what, what time, though? No, we open at 12. So 12 to 8, eight 9. nine. Okay. Wow. Wow, okay. Yeah, so the first week we did five cheesesteaks uh -huh. on a Friday. Sure. I just looked on a Friday. I got right. first Friday, you know. Um, yeah, until probably last Friday. Has there been something, like, obviously, Port Norwood Pizza is pretty cool. Has well, there, he gave us a real good cheesesteak review. Okay, gotcha. No surprise. It's delicious. Yeah. But has there been another experience where, like, somebody's traveled hundreds of miles to get to you guys, and um, they're like, oh, we're here just for this? 
What? Yeah. Hawaii? Yeah, okay. We've, we've had, yeah, some people. Yeah, no, no they did. Like, it was yeah, just somebody for you guys. that yeah. saw us or. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, the cra- it's so crazy, you know, what people, um, what I hear, like people mm-hmm. that, you know, um, like our girls, was one girl went away and mm-hmm. um, was in the airport and, like, was sitting behind somebody and they're like, oh my God, you work at Cafe Carmelo. No you know, kidding. It's just like a small, small world that, you know. When was that, like, aha moment for you guys that like yeah we 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 have something here we're, we're making it again it, i still i still feel it sometimes yeah like tonight like we you know you look at um what we did last year and you're like okay this week was a little slow last mm-hmm. year and then you know tonight we had an hour wait and we actually stopped taking tables at okay. like 6 30 um because we had an hour wait close mm-hmm. to eight so was, you know it's some sometimes it still is like I, I still can't believe Got to pinch that yourself people, a little people bit. People still coming in here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what is uh, on your menu right now? What's what's your favorite thing that you guys have? Uh, is that change? Is that pretty consistent? Yeah, yeah. I get tired of like I, I don't eat cheesesteaks anymore. Mm-hmm. I had, <laughs> um, I, I can always eat pizza. Okay. Um, I can eat pizza every day. We have a really good provolone pie. Mm-hmm. Um, that's on the menu. Yeah, so I feel like I feel it's feel a like, big Northeast Philly thing. Like is provolone sticky pie. provolone. I do. Yeah. yeah. We use uh, aged, sharp, uh, lightly smoked provolone. Okay. Ooh. It's really good. All right. Um, what else? Uh, the drunken our rigatoni was, was awesome. Our lasagna is really good. Okay. Yeah. I have to say, I had it the other night. <laughs> I was tasting it. It was really good. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. This yeah. is, you know, you had our square pie. That's yeah. really good. So the, the basil that's on that, yeah. just the pop of freshness, but also... Yeah. The, the sauce gravy uh, that's <laughs> on there. Now, that stuff's all homemade as well. And I, yeah, I yeah. The we, vodka sauce is highly recommended for you guys on everything. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people get, like, um, chicken parm with pasta, and they mm. add, you know, they'll substitute vodka sauce. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you guys are looking at the menu, thinking about, like, new things, what's that process for you guys? So, my thing in the beginning, when we first opened, I said, I want to keep my menu really small, a mm-hmm. few things of each, and then we'll be creative with our specials. Mm. So I feel like we still do that. Like sure. a menu really hasn't changed much. Um, you know, we have fried mozzarella and you know fries and um, you know all the staples. Mm-hmm. Some things we change, like our wings or whatnot. Um, and some, but we've we've kept our pizzas pretty much the same and our pastas. Sometimes we'll change one pasta mm-hmm. or another. Um, uh, if pasta we have. A, it's called an Ariani's Cravings. It's mm. really good. It has sausage, broccoli, rob, and beans. It's like an old school Italian dish yeah. that we do. Absolutely. Um, and uh, all our pastas are homemade mm. every day, fresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, that's something else we we know we take pride in, mm-hmm. um, and we try to do as every, everything we can, mm-hmm. you know, to be everything fresh and homemade yeah. here. Keep yeah. everything consistent, yeah. and you know, have the quality control in there. So where you guys are now, obviously, there's been a lot of growth. Are there plans for the future for you guys? Like, what does that look like? If you if you're comfortable sharing? Yeah. You know? No, I, I um the biggest rumor um for us that we were moving to the Wawa in Linden and uh, Frankfurt. Oh, okay. That's not happening. Okay. Uh, it was just a rumor. Shut that and, rumor down right here. <laughs> breaking news. Yeah, we we like to you know um, we're in talks with the with the um, um right now they're kind of filling up everything here, mm-hmm. um, but uh, we're fine where we are now. You know I know it's you know. You know, it's a little tight. We got to, um, uh, even even here in the back is worse. You know, it's mm-hmm. real small. And, um, but I also hope that, I think that helps us keep everything fresh and we just move everything and every, nothing sits, you know. Um, so that's, that's a good thing for me, yeah. you know. But if something opens up next door to us or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, we'll, maybe we'll make the move. But right now we're comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys have been wildly successful with it, it seems, too. Yeah, we we we're really we're really fortunate. Uh, we thank I thank God every day, and it's just mm-hmm. you know it's, it's really great. Yeah, I say it all the time. Blessed by the best for all yep, the stuff to happen, absolutely. and it is it's crazy how these things just like you said earlier, it just kind of happens. Somebody yeah. sits in your chair, and it's like, hey, I have the spot. Bang, we're you know right. now here we are, wildly successful. Six months prior to pandemic, and yep. you guys are still crushing it. So with that, obviously, it, t- it takes an entire team to bring that to life, but it it's it has to start from somewhere. So when you guys are bringing people in, and you know people are walking through the doors as customers, but you're also bringing in people and staff. What are some things that like you 
you say to the staff, like, these are kind of our golden rules here. It seems like families want to treat everybody kind of like your family. Yep. But what are some of the staples that you guys have? Like, if you're going to work here, if you're going to have Cafe Carmela as the place that's cutting your check, essentially, yeah. this is what you have to do working here, and this is how we retain our customers. Yeah, I... I um I tell I, I tell my guys in the back too all the time like you know when you when you're putting out something you know if you were sitting down and you, and somebody was making that for you would you eat it sure right would yeah. that look good would that look like shit right you know? right yeah <laughs> you know um, not 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 just taste wise but sure. look wise you know yeah. like I appeal is by appeal yeah right yeah. Um, and they they like we got really really good guys back there. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know take pride and you know when, when stuff doesn't go out right you know mm-hmm. they're always asking me like you know what happened why did right. that person like it or or you know something like that mm-hmm. you know um and we just try to work on it try to you know better ourselves for yeah i know. really i can't emphasize it enough the feeling that you get whether i've picked up food here whether it's eating here it just really does feel like such a family and it's it's not just one person kind of leading that charge. Yes, it has to stem from somewhere, but it's everybody taking on that yeah, role of like, this absolutely. is just, this is what we do. So as we're kind of like coming to a close here, I always like to ask the question of like, Chase U stands for Chase the best version of you. How do you guys do that at Cafe Carmelo to make sure that when you walk in here, when you're walking down home, when people are in the airport, people know that Cafe Carmelo, I know that that's a solid place. I can go there, I can get pasta, pizza, obviously a cheesesteak. And it's going to be quality stuff, and it's going to be a good time. How do you guys, again, chase you to make sure that that's insured throughout? Well, I, it starts with, you know, um, I, I tell I tell my uh, girls, uh, a lot of the girls that work in the front, mm-hmm. like, when the fir- when a person walks in through the door, that's the first person they, they're mm-hmm. not looking at the cooks. Sure. They're not looking at, you know, um, um, at the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. You know, they're looking at you. You, you have to be the, you know... You're the you're the face of Cafe Carmela. You know what I mean. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's my wife. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's so just you know we 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 be not you're, you're, we, like I said um, we're gonna give you all the respect in the world mm-hmm. as long as you give us the respect back. Right. You know some people don't, mm-hmm. and then we're you know we kind of fight back. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> we're from South Philly, so sure, it's not, you're sure. not gonna get off that easy. Right. You know? But for ninety percent of the people that come in here are. You know, grateful, and you know they're 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 awesome people, and um, just treat them like family. Yeah. You know? Hi, how you doing? You know, how can I help you? You know, you're waiting for something, mm-hmm. you, whatever it is. You know, and um, you treat them like family. Yeah. You know, um, so that that's our you know that that's our our main goal is to f- make you feel like you're part of this. Yeah. Family, you and know? you guys, you and we do you that it. from how we treat our staff mm-hmm. so hopefully that you know it's transpires yep. to the to the customer and I, I feel like we uh, we don't have anybody here that i would say okay yeah maybe mm-hmm. you know maybe that person doesn't treat sure. that person you know what i mean we, right. we, we wouldn't have them here um and the same thing goes for the back you know yeah you guys set the standard without yeah. a doubt so final thing wrap it up what's one thing that you want the people to know when they come to cafe carmela and two let them know where we're at so they can come and visit and get some yeah. great food. Yeah, we're 2859 Home Avenue, right off the circle, Home Circle, Northeast Philly. Um, when you come to Cafe Carmelo, you're going to, um, we try, I, I try to make sure my job is I order the most, the, the best quality ingredients I can find at the best price. Mm-hmm. So you're not, you know, a lot of people come and say, like, we are, you know, our cheesesteak is, is, the most in the area, mm-hmm. the priciest, I would say. Um, but you know, we do use a, a really good quality meat. Um, we use Cooper Sharp. Our rolls from are s- delivered fresh every day mm-hmm. from South Philly. So um, we just we want you to know that um, you're going to get the best quality ingredients that we could possibly find uh, for the best price, and and we put love into what we do. Awesome. Beautiful. Well, Joe, this was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for the hospitality that you guys have given us. This was such a great experience. You feel the family through and through when you walk right through those doors, along with an absolutely incredible aroma of South Philly Italian food. So I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Guys, if you haven't yet, come check them out and make sure to hit that subscribe button. You guys know the deal. Less stress. Stay blessed. Cheers to you.